Okay, uh, removing the disc tray part, uh, try take three uh, for this. Okay, uh, this is a video on how to remove the disc and tape tray from a Sun 3160 desk side workstation. Now, the first thing is you need to actually open the front of it. And there are two screws here. And then down below, there's another two screws, so four screws in total. Once you've removed the screws, at the top of it, you need to get a screwdriver. And I find that pushing this way gets the tab open. And then you use a screwdriver to open it a little further, and a screwdriver to open it a little further. And invariably, the front of this gets bent because you do it that way. Uh, lower the tray. Now we are actually ready to remove the disk drive tray. Found something useful is to have a piece of cardboard. You slide it in the back between the fan and its uh, protruding bolts and uh, the uh, cables on the back of the disk drive. Uh, then um, you need to angle the whole tray forward uh, there are tabs here on the front of the tape drive that you need to get past this uh, upright. Uh, and it's sort of a jockeying, you sort of jockey the back. And once they're past, once, uh, once we're past that, then at that point you can straighten it out. And then at this point there is an internal cable uh, that you have to actually push up into and on top of the shelf that's right here. There's a shelf that goes across. It's got holes. We'll see that in a little bit. And so now it's actually pushed up a little bit. And now, and I'm going to remove these, you should be able to pull the whole thing over. You have to be careful about the SCSI cable, which is already disconnected. Uh, again, there's not a lot of, of of extra clearance space up here. I'm just gonna pull the cable out the top. So now the whole thing comes out and voila, we have the tray. Well there. And then the cable that you have to be careful of is this cable right here that comes out of the bottom. It's the power cable. Okay, so this, this is a Sun 3160 uh, disc and tape tray that goes in the top of the uh, 160 uh, chassis. Uh, on the back, uh, we see, and let's see if I can get this framed correctly. On the back, we have two Fujitsu disc drives. Notice that they're, they're top to top. I have no idea why they did it that way. Uh, but they did. Uh, also notice that the cables all are neatly tucked and, and folded and going around uh, there. I don't need that there. Um, these are Fujitsu disk drives. I believe that they're 90 megabytes, but I could be mistaken. Uh, there are paper uh, defect lists here uh, that get uh, entered at the factory, uh, but they're there in case you accidentally lose your defect list, which was something you could actually do. If, if you formatted the drives without extracting the defect list first, you would lose it, and re-entering it is a pain. Uh, so that's the back. Uh, then here uh, is the uh, underside, and this is a Fujitsu disk drive, and this is pretty traditional Fujitsu type circuitry. Uh, we have these large uh, ASICs uh, here uh, with a gray out outline, and then these have gold underneath them. Uh, the gold is, is a very Fujitsu thing. Uh, lots of ICs, densely packed. Uh, small resistors and small capacitors. Uh, you know, these are less than you, 
less than a quarter inch, maybe three, three sixteenths of an inch in, in length uh, there. Uh, there's a double E prom. There's an, uh, an electrically erasable uh, prom. No, it's not a double E. It's a, it is an E prom. You can uh, erase it with ultraviolet light by removing that sticker. Um, and that's the drive uh, itself. Then moving forward, and let me look at this to see. Uh, moving forward, this is the archive tape drive, and this is one of the, the newer ones. So uh, the original one was had the, the tape, uh, the tape, sliding in this way uh, in the front. That was in the Sun 120s, uh, two 120s. Uh, those were four tracks, so they can drive, so they could contain 20 uh, megabytes of data. Basically, each stripe on the tape was five megabytes. You had four stripes, so you have 20 megabytes. This one actually has nine tracks. It splits all the tracks in half, uh, and so you get nine times five, or 45 megabytes per tape. Now, tapes always came in these boxes. Uh, I am going to see if I can. Okay, 3160 again uh, for this. So the tapes, they go in this way. Uh, there is a door here that exposes the tape. And when I slide the tape in, it presses on this, uh, which then uh, allows me to press all the way in. And the door has just opened. And then you slide that and it locks the, the uh, tape drive in place. And here is the uh, read, 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 read right head there. Uh, this positions up and down as it runs. It goes da 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 uh, as it's doing that. Um, the tape itself, this is sort of sticky, has a solid aluminum base and that's what allows it to, to register inside the enclosure. Uh, then following that you have uh, the first SCSI controller. This is SCSI to archive quarter inch tape, the quarter inch tape drive here. And then you have a second board, which is a SCSI to SD disk drive. I believe it's SD. It's been a long time uh, for that. And this can control two disk drives, uh, the two disk drives here. This can only control one tape drive. And that makes the overall uh, tray. Now, cables. Uh, are run carefully. They run down and around and in. Uh, so, and they're folded numerous times because you've got to get the orientations right. Uh, so don't just unfold all the cables. Uh, be careful with that. And that's the Sun 23160 uh, disc and tape tray. Okay, Sun 3, backplane and power supply, take four. Um, this is a Sun 3 160 desk side server. Uh, these were the 12 slot chassis that you'd put next to your desk. Sounded like a Hoover vacuum cleaner taking off. Uh, you pull off the front, you just pull it out like this. Uh, and then this is the door into the power supply. Up here you'd have a quarter inch tape and you'd have, have the tape and disc tray. Separate video. Uh, to get this door open, there are four screws that you have to loosen, and then you have to get behind it. And it's quite often hard to get behind it with a, I'm using a straight uh, screwdriver. So there's some little slots up here, and that usually lets you get this just a little bit open. And you have to do it on both sides. And then once you have it a little bit open, you sort of work the two back and forth. And then the whole dry, the whole tray slides forward. Now, this tray is actually a floating tray. There isn't a, a, a secured hinge at the bottom. There are two tabs that go up, and then there are two uh, sheet metal uh, slots that they sit on. And when the whole thing is screwed together, it's rock solid. But I could actually pull the bottom of this tray off if I wanted to. Now, uh, this is the back plane. Uh, 
Okay, part two of backplanes, take one. Uh, yeah. um, here uh, we see the actual backplane of the computer. Uh, it's got 12 slots going across. Um, if I recall correctly, this is the P1 uh, memory or uh, P2BME bus, the P2 bus, and then the bottom one is the P3. Notice these big uh, heavy-duty power cables going to the power rails, these aluminum bars. Um, on this, the only slot that is actually special uh, in this is slot 7. It has a VME connector that comes out to a set of pins, and this is a, a, a VME connector that you s carefully slide onto it. Don't get it off by one because you'll uh, melt a trace uh, in the cable. There's a short. So get it on right and don't bend the pins. Notice how the cable goes to the side and then wraps underneath these. And uh, here we see that the cable is folded over. It lays flat as it goes up. It then goes into a, into a, a slot here, which then takes it and brings it out on the, on the top. This is the disk and tape drive bay. Normally there would be a quarter inch tape drive uh, right there. Uh, there are jumpers. Uh, there are six different jumpers. And as far as I recall, as far as I can recall, you really never had to deal with the jumpers unless you had something like a custom board, like uh, a plotter board or a, a half inch tape controller board, things like that. But for the standard sun boards and for memory boards, you didn't have to deal, do, do anything with the jumpers. So leave them alone. Um, here we are looking at uh, the bottom of the power supply. This is a, a 20 amp RF, uh, RFI filter to filter the AC power. Uh, probably primarily going out, not necessarily coming in. Down here there's a plug. This actually plugs into the lower fan tray. There are six fans down there. Uh, they, uh, the tray can slide out. If you're taking the tray out, remember to disconnect this plug before you take the tray out. And then to close it, uh, you uh, lift this up. You have to push these down so they fold in. Make sure that they are going inside, not outside the RFI shielding. Particularly important on this side. Uh, wiggle a little bit to make sure it's seated. And then goes in, replace the four screws, and you're done. So that is a tour of the back plane and power supply of a Sun 3 160 uh, dust side workstation.